Welcome everybody and in this video I'm going to show you how we can hack the Windows API and prevent programs from opening files. Anyone who opens a file will see this message, no files for you. And we can see it returns null and notepad can't even open the file. And we'll be able to inject this into any program and it will prevent them from opening and creating files. So let's begin and write this code. Okay, so let's start by creating our payload.c file. This will be the source code for our DLL file that once injected will take control of the user program it's been injected to and prevent the opening of files. So with that completed, let's include windows.h and we're going to include string.h. Now we're going to create our DLL main function. Okay. And we're just going to return true here. So we're going to create a switch statement. And if the process is attached, we're going to call a hook function. And our hook function will essentially hook into the executables import directory and change the addresses of the lower level Windows API functions, which are responsible for the opening and creation of files. Let's now just create that hook function. And we're essentially just gonna call a function which we haven't defined yet called hook function. And we're gonna hook create file A to a custom create file A. And we're also gonna hook the YChar version as well. Now these are lower level functions in the Windows API, these create uh, file functions. And essentially they're called when you want to create or open files. So what we're going to do is our DLA is going to inject its own address into the import directory of the executable it's been injected to. And we're going to divert them to us. So whenever these lower level functions are called, they will call our, our function in our DLL file. We're then able to just return null to prevent the file from ever being able to be opened. So let's now create our custom functions. And they have to look exactly like the functions they're calling the same prototypes right Okay, so that's it for the create file A. We're just going to copy and paste this. We're going to do create file W. And we're going to change this to a wide string. Okay, so we got our custom functions. So now what we can say is we can say message box A. No files for you. You're not allowed to open files because we poisoned you. There you go. And then we'll just say MB OK. So it shows them an OK message box essentially, which they can then press OK with. And we're going to return null. We're just going to copy and paste it to this one too. Now, this way, whichever one they call, 
depending whether they're using wide strings or you know unicode strings or um ascii strings whichever one they call we will show this message and return null preventing the opening and creation of files so with that completed we now need to create the hook function now the hook function is complicated because it requires a good understanding of the PE file format, which is basically the format of executable files in Windows. So we're going to say void asterisk hook function constchar module name constchar function name void new function pointer. So we will essentially the function name found in the module name to a pointer in our DLL file. So we're going to store the old pointer value because we'll return that in case they want it for whatever reason. And we're going to get the module of the executable file by passing null. So uh, it should be noted that we're only overriding this functionality for the .exe file. So any lower level dependencies dll files will be unaffected if they have different import directories okay so now if the h module is null we're going to say fail to get module handle and this is just feedback for us okay and then we're just going to say printf or hook module percent s function percent s i'm going to put in the module name and the function name and we're going to say p image dos header p dos header equals p image dos header h module okay so the dos header will give us access to all of these attributes found in the exe file but we only care about this by here okay we can use this to get to our import directory now we're going to say p image empty headers e empty headers equals p image empty headers lp byte h module plus p dos header e lf a new okay and then that will take us to the nt headers which essentially has our signature our, our file header and our optional uh, header and then we can then use this to access the data directory where we'll find our import directory okay so now we're going to say p image import descriptor p import descriptor equals p image import descriptor lp byte h module plus ENT headers optional header dot data directory image directory entry import and then we're going to get the virtual address okay so that'll give us the virtual address of the import descriptor and what that's going to do that's essentially going to take us here so we'll see all of these uh, modules with their strings okay and then we can find the kernel32.dll string to access the functions inside here. Okay. Once we find those functions, the final step is to overwrite the pointer of the functions we're looking for so that it points to our DLL file. Now we're going to say while the import descriptor name. Okay. Because there's a null descriptor at the end signify the end of the import uh, directory right we're going to say lp c string esc mod name equals uh, uh, lpc string so we're casting lp byte h module plus p import descriptor name 
And now we're going to say string I compare. So it's case insensitive. Module name equals zero. So here what we're doing, we're checking if the name of the module, kernel32.dll in this case, is found. Okay. And when it's found, this condition will be true. So then we're going to say module was found. And we're going to say p image thunk data. P original thunk. We're going to cast it. We're going to do the same again. Okay, so now we need to extract the actual functions. Okay, so we're going to say p image import by name, p import by name equals p image import by name, lp byte, h module plus p original thunk, q1 address of data. Now this will extract the name information so we'll be able to check the name of the function we're on so for example write file find close close handle map view of file all of these things now we're going to say print f function found then s import by name and name and then we're going to say string compare import by name name function name and just check if it's equal to zero and if it is then we found the function right then we say matched Now we're going to store the all pointer value in case the caller of our hook function needs it for whatever reason. Maybe they want it, want it because maybe they want to have some sort of pass through where they do something like in a log message and then call the original function. That could be used as a way of monitoring what a program's doing. So now we're going to have to change the uh, page to uh, be read and writable so we're able to change the pointer okay so we're gonna virtual protect where that pointer is stored okay we're going to virtual protect it and we're going to change the permissions to be read writable we're going to store the old protection rights as well 
And obviously if we fail to do that, we're just going to say failed to change memory protection for hooking. And then we're going to return no. Otherwise, we're going to change the actual pointer, the point to our function. Now, to understand how this is working, you need to understand assembly language. There's a course in the video description that teaches you assembly language if you're interested in that. So here we're going to call virtual protect, set the rights of that page back to what they used to be. Okay, and then we're just going to return the old pointer value. And then finally, down here, we're going to say pthunk plus plus p original thunk plus plus. Uh, let's just zoom out. So we can see what's going on. Oh, and just down here, by the way. Under these two, we just want to say uh, p import descriptor plus plus, and then finally we're going to return all pointer value. Okay, that's fine. Let's take a look and see what we got. We got our function here. We loop through the import directory. When we find the module that we're looking for that holds the function pointer we want to change, we go through it. And when we find the function and it's a match, we change its permissions so it's rewritable where that pointer is stored. And then we inject our own pointer straight into it. Then we change the protection back to what it was before so it can't be changed again. And then we just return the old pointer value. Yeah, and if the function is not found, obviously we loop through to the next ones. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so let's just include the stdio header file. And now we're going to compile it as a, as a uh, DLL file. So we're going to say gcc halo.c dash o halo.dll and then we're going to do dash shed you can see that work fine and now we have a payload.dll file now at this point you need to build an injector which will inject the dll straight into the binary of the target executable process this can be done quite easily but just because this is focused more on this payload, this tutorial is, we're going to use an injector already built. So we're going to use x64 debug, which is a debugger. And we're going to inject our DLL into the notepad binary. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the uh, Skylar plugin. We're going to go to the DLL injection. And then we're going to inject our DLL like so. You can see it says DLL injection was successful. And now if we try to open a file, you can see we've caused the breakpoint in the debugger to, to, to start, but that's okay. Let's just skip past it. And we're just going to open up a file. And we can see it says no files for you. You're not allowed to open files because we poisoned you. And there we go. And then you can see Notepad says the handle is invalid because it was unable to open that file, right? So you can inject any 64-bit program with this. And if you're really, if you really want to do something fun, you can have a loop on all the processes and inject all of them, so none of them will be able to actually open files. Now, unless you're writing kernel modules, there's a lot that's going to stop you or try to stop you from doing things like this. 
for example, I had to disable my antivirus to make this video because it detects those things as malicious, understandably. But if you did write a kernel driver, you could get around a lot of those things for educational purposes, of course. But yeah, I hope you like this video. Check the video description where you can learn assembly language, which will help you understand how to do things like this. Thanks for watching.